How Michael Dell worked his way to being the 20th richest person in the world. Michael Dell was born on 23rd February 1965 to Alexander Dell, an orthodontist, and Lauren Charlotte, a stockbroker in Houston, Texas. He attended primary school at Herod Elementary School and is a bright young boy. He was able to learn various aspects of business and finance from his stockbroker mother, which helped him to develop an interest in business despite his young age. When Dell was seven years old, he purchased his first calculator. When he was eight, he applied to be tested for high school level skills to enter business early and save him the trouble of enduring the remaining years of school. While his parents insisted he stayed in school, Dell preferred to invest his creative energies in various after school ventures. Even as a teenager, Dell worked various part time jobs. When he was 12, he worked as a dishwasher at a Chinese restaurant to fund his stamp collection and operate a mail order trading business that revolved around baseball cards and stamps, which earned him about $2,000. A few years later, he worked selling newspaper subscriptions to from the Houston Post. While working from the Houston Post, Dell analyzed the consumer demographic effective practices based on his analysis which earned him $18,000 in one year as a high school student. He invested his earnings from these jobs in stocks and precious metals. In junior high school, Dell came across an early teletype terminal. Then when he turned 15, he acquired an Apple II, his first computer, which he took apart to learn how it worked. Dell discovered his love for computers and despite enrolling for med school at the University of Texas in 1983, he still pursued it single-mindedly by selling upgrade kits for personal computers. After high school in 1983, in Dell's first year as a pre-med student at the University of Texas, he tapped $1,000 off his savings and started the business of customizing and upgrading off-the-shelf computers, then selling them to customers. He took advantage of the inefficiency of the retail channel in delivering PCs to customers and applied for a vendor license that allowed him to bid on contracts for the state of Texas. Without the overhead of a store, Dell was able to win bids. He realized that as a manufacturer selling PCs directly to customers, his cost savings were very significant. Dell focused not only on making good machines but on stronger customer support and cheaper competitive pricing. Initially, he operated out of his dorm room, but the business grew and he eventually moved out. In his first month of business, Dell sold roughly $180,000 worth of PCs. In January 1984, Dell registered the company as PCs Limited. By the summer of that year, after spending only one year at the university, Dell decided to focus all his time on his budding business, so he dropped out of college. He later renamed his new company Dell Computer Corp. in 1987, as the company continued to grow. Dell then set his sight on overtaking IBM, the industry leader at the time. In October 1989, Dell got married to the love of his life, Susan Laborman, who had been an active entrepreneur and sportswoman before she came into his life. In 1997, Dell became absorbed in finding a way to reduce the failure rates of his machines. This was even considering that his company's computer boasted some of the highest quality ratings in the PC industry. He believed reducing the frequency of hard drive handling during assembly was the solution. At the time, the handling count was more than 30. But after some extensive alterations in the production process, the count was reduced below 15. As a result, the rate of rejected hard drives dropped by 40% and the failure rates of Dell PCs by 20%. Dell believed in constantly rethinking and improving his company's operations, and that has helped Dell Computer Core remain successful. With his sight set on industry leader IBM, Dell in 1991 rallied his employees and succeeded in raising sales to over $800 million. In 1992, he set a target to surpass the $1.5 billion that year. Dell, the overachiever, indeed surpassed the target with sales reaching $2 billion. However, the juggernaut he had created was growing at a pace too fast for the young entrepreneur. In 1993, the Dell Computer Core stock price fell from 
$49 in January, down to $16 by July. Dell's CFO resigned, leaving a hole in the management, and Dell had to scrap the company's new lines of notebook computers due to poor production. The company was sidelined for over 12 months of the fastest-growing segment of the PC market. Dell realized he had to do something fast. He sought out more experienced managers to help him regain control of his nine-year-old wonder. He brought in Mort Tolfer, a seasoned executive for Motorola, to handle day-to-day -day operations, then Kevin Rawlings to run American Operations, an organizational expert from Bain & Co., and interestingly, and John Medica, an Apple PowerBook designer. Within 12 months, profits rose to $149 million. Many years later, in 2004, Dell stepped down as CEO of his company, but remained the chairman of the board. He also obtained positions on the foundation board of the World Economic Forum and the executive committee of the International Business Council, not to mention being a part of the United States Presidential Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. Despite his successes, Dell and his company experienced their fair share of controversies and failures. Poorly manufactured computers resulted in the company spending about $300 million to fix them, a large issue that lost the company its top position among the giants in the industry. To make things right in 2007, Dell reclaimed his position as CEO, but it was too late. Three years later, in 2010, Dell's company once again made headlines when Dell agreed to pay over $100 million to settle charges of accounting fraud that were filed by the Security and Exchange Commission. According to the charges, investors claimed that Dell's company had padded its account statements and misled them about its actual earnings. This was not looking too good for Dell, and in a bid to rebuild his company in 2013, his intention to take the company private again. He eventually made a deal with a private equity firm that specialized in technology, Silver Lake Partners, as well as Microsoft, the computer software giant. This deal was valued somewhere between $23 billion to $24 billion, making it one of the largest buyouts in recent history. By doing so, Dell believed that it would open a new chapter for his company, his customers, and his team members. Many analysts shared his enthusiasm, though they believed that the company was facing serious challenges. The company saw its shares of the PC market drop as well as dealing with the uprising of tablets and smartphone manufacturers. However, Today, Michael Dell's net worth is about $37.6 million. Dell was able to analyze his options before deciding to go further in his business. Critical thinking would help you make the right decisions at critical times. Believe in yourself first, otherwise you would have a difficult time getting others to believe in you. The point of learning skills and doing something you are passionate about is to use your skills as a tool to accomplish objectives and to allow your passion to fuel your efforts to be successful. Good confidence comes with hard work and practice. Find that one thing that you love and let it make money for you. Work hard and invest your time, efforts and skills in your dreams. Look at the gaps left by others and find innovative ways to fill them. And if you have something that works, keep making it better. That's a good way to be successful. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.